So Dr. Cole Glazer's away and you still came to church. I'm going to uh, take a picture and show him. So everybody <laughs> wave to Scott. There we go. We'll, we'll prove to him that how, how well behaved you are that you came to church anyway. So you are this city's oldest continuous Protestant congregation. I think you look great. <laughs> it's an honor to be here among you, to meet you finally in person, as I have watched you from afar, from across the country. I want to thank your staff and ministers for providing such extraordinary hospitality to me. Um, before I got here and arriving here, um, Laura's been amazing. You sang William Billings, uh, a, a Boston composer. Uh, it's really been an extraordinary experience. I think, and Scott Colglazer thinks, that our two churches, First Church in Los Angeles and Old South Church in Boston, are sort of doppelgangers. We are, on either side of the country, similar churches, and so it is really a priv privilege to be with you and to see you today. Like Scott, I am the recent beneficiary of a four-month sabbatical, in my case, and I want to say to you that it was, for me, a delicious and adventuresome time, and that for our church, it was a good and meaningful time, a time of growth and refreshment, and I hope and trust that you will have a similar experience. Will you pray with me? Come near God. Bend low. Enter this your sacred house. Come so near to each of us as to oil the hinges of our heart's doors that they may swing easily and gently to welcome your coming. Amen. Cry out, Isaiah, says God. Cry out. You who bring good tidings, get up onto a, a high mountain, and there, from the top of the world, lift up your voice with strength. Use your outdoor voice. Get over your Lutheran shyness. Speak up and shout out God's good news. Oh, but we don't. First church in Los Angeles, Old South Church in Boston, we are quiet Christians. We progressive Christians, we are demure. We're reserved and reticent about the good news we bear. It's not polite to cry out about religion, we're thinking. But here's the problem. The problem is that there is so much bad religion out there, so much mean religion, religion that has been contorted, dangerous religion, and it's really, really loud. There's the loud, dangerous versions of American Christianity from bumper stickers to the incessant round-the-clock preaching of televangelists. From the radio preachers to the billboards, in my sabbatical, I drove across the country and I listened to the radio and I looked at the billboards. The billboards that line the highways and the byways of this country are horrible. Shouting that if you don't get their religion, you're going to hell. That God is angry and full of vengeance and full of judgment. They're shouting damnation and punishment and hellfire. Then there's the loud, dangerous versions of Islam, radical Islamic extremists, 
and Judaism, God help us, has its own versions. They shout out their versions of holy wars, whether they're calling for women to keep silence in church or creationism or shouting for LGBT people folk to, to straighten up or go to hell. Like the Arizona preacher in December, in a sermon he called for an AIDS-free Christmas and the way to get an AIDS-free Christmas, he said, is to kill gays. That's all over the internet right now. Like the Sacramento preacher who last Sunday evening praised the brutal massacre in Orlando in the nightclub, praised it and said things I won't say today. Now these are not the majority voices, but they're loud and they're pervasive. And the media, traditional media and social media, these are, these are megaphones for bad religion. It's everywhere. It's really loud and it's really dangerous. It's killing people. And here's the thing, when people between the ages of 18 and 29 in this country, if you interview people between the ages of 18 and 29 and ask them, what do you know about Christianity? What do, you th what do you think of when you think of Christians? You want to know what they say? They say Christians are homophobic, judgmental, intellectually stifling, anti-science, and boring. And here's the thing, those people who answer those surveys, they have no idea who you are, First Church, or what you believe, or how you love. No understanding of your wide, wide welcome. And here's what I think, and here's what I think God thinks that the world is too dangerous for churches like ours to remain silent. Too dangerous. Lives are at stake. Now, First Church is speaking good things to this world. I know you are. You pay attention to climate change and God's good earth. You had eco palms on Palm Sunday. I'm gonna figure out how, what those are and get them to Old South Church. You study Islam and you have strong, you build strong interfaith relations. You read widely through the book group and the seekers classes. Your hearts and your minds are open, wide open to God's wide world. You have a heart for outreach, the Union Rescue Mission, your own school, HopeNet. You are about I watched the video, you are about dignity, joy, and justice. Amen? Amen? You are a Christian community shaped by beauty and the arts. Amen? Amen? You are a people with a heart for this city. Amen? Amen? Your door is as wide as God's open heart. First Church, you witness to God's good news through your webpage and your social media. You're trying. I'm going to give you that. You are really trying. You are trying and you mean well. But here's the truth. In the hearing of this wide world, even in the hearing of this city, you're barely a whisper. First Church isn't a shout. At best, you're a muffled murmur. Because the loud religion is so loud and so pervasive it has taken over. Now it was Isaiah's charge to get up onto that high mountain, step by step, rock by rock, to climb up there, to get to a high vantage, and then to lift up his voice with all the strength he had and tell it true. Tell him who God is. And that's how news got shared in ancient times by runners and people on mountains. But, but that was then, and this is now. And climbing mountains is so, it's so retro, amen? <laughs> Today we have an array of communication tools and the first and the foremost is talk to someone. Share your faith at work. 
on the street. And then there's social media. If we who have good news leave social media to those who have bad news, we will have failed our God. So here's my plea to you, and I get to say this, I get to preach and run, right? I just get to say this, and then I'm in, back in Boston, so you know, you get to do with it what you will, but here's my plea to you. Get on First Church's social media platforms, they're there, and your own, and spread the love, First Church. Raise your voice and spread the love. And in case you don't know what to say, here you go. Say, say what you know. Say that God is a God of mercy, more mercy than judgment. Say this, that in heaven, in heaven there is no border between the U.S. and Mexico or between Israel and Palestine. Say that such borders are human concoctions born of our sin. Say this, that in heaven, in heaven, there is neither citizen nor immigrant, just children of God. Say this, tell the world about the God who frees the enslaved. No other God does that. Tell the world that you, First Church, you put your faith in God and in science, amen? Shout out that God is still speaking and you're listening, that this church is listening, this church is evolving. You're not stuck in the first century. You're not bound to an ancient creed. You're listening and learning. Shout out this, that among this church's most treasured leaders are LGBT persons who bring precious gifts to ministry whose lives and talents and families are a cornucopia of blessedness. Shout out about our creator God, the artist God, who made us and who painted our skins different colors, beautiful hues, bronze and ochre, wheat and chicory, bourbon and parchment and cream. Tell the world about the God who loves the unlovely, the God who opens the prison doors and sets the captives free. Tell about the God who binds up the brokenhearted with tender ministrations. Cry out that you know that God is more Jewish mother than angry despot. <laughs> that you know a God whose delight is to feed her hungry children and provide them with every good gift. Shout this, that we know a God for whom forgiveness is forever. Forever, there is no end to it. Lift up your voices first, church. Tell the world of the God whose grace has no ends, whose grace is boundless, a God whose grace is free free and boundless. There's some good news. First Church, I know you. I've gotten to know you. I've read every word on your webpage and every archived newsletter. I've studied your church calendar and I follow you on social media. I have met Scott and Laura and your ministers of music and others, and I know you to be. I know you to be a sanctuary in the city of Los Angeles, a place and a people whose hearts are tuned to God's heart, who, are, who refuse to turn away from the needs of your neighbors. I know this, but the world doesn't. So in this season, this hard season, this contentious season of public discourse and heartbreaking acts of violence and violation, this city and this world aches, aches to hear the good news that you bear. You and your ministry appeal to the better angels of our nature and the better angels of our nation. And I want to say to you, 
thank you and bless you for that. Thank you and bless you for that. But the truth is that in the hearing of the wide world, even in the hearing of this city, you're barely a whisper. So I'm asking you, I'm going off to Boston, so I'll, I don't, you don't have to look me in the eye and tell me you're going to do it, but I am asking you, I am pleading with you, for God's sake, because silence is acquiescence, because silence is complicity, because silence is death, I'm asking you to raise your voices with the good news that you know, the good news that you bear. Will you, who bear God's good news, find your own high mountain? Make your way up there and tell the world what you know of God. Will you please?